it's preparing. It'll be just a second. Okay, perfect. All right, it looks like we are live. So that's perfect. A uh, great place to start. So hello and welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jenny Zeller and I am the Arts and Nature Curator at Bernheim. Thank you so much for joining us for In the Studio with 2021 Artist in Residence, Norman Spencer. Uh, also thank you to Amy Landon who is here helping us uh, get going on this and Facebook Live. So uh, it's very exciting to be uh, live streaming on Facebook. If anybody is catching this, please try and let us know who you are by putting your name in the comments. Um, and we'll see if we can figure it out. <laughs> I'm able to see those or not. So, um, but before we get started, I just want to ask that everyone kind of mute themselves for the moment. Uh, I'm going to just give a really quick brief overview about Bernheim, um, introduce Norman, and then at that point, um, he's going to not only give us a talk about his creative practice and his Bernheim experience, he will also be doing a live demonstration of a lino cut. Um, so at this time, uh, you know, I encourage you to ask questions throughout the whole process. Uh, you can do that by either putting your question in the chat box and I can ask that question for you or you are free to unmute yourself and, and ask the question yourself. I, I ask when you do this that you just introduce yourself, please. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. All right, so again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's a pleasure to be introducing you to 2021 Artist in Residence, Norman Spencer. Um, I do just wanna say that Bernheim is open. We are open every day at 7 a.m., currently closing at 7 p.m. Um, and if you don't know anything about Bernheim, I'm, I'm gonna say Bernheim is a private nonprofit, educational and recreational nature preserve located in Claremont, Kentucky, south of Louisville. We are giant in size. We have uh, 16,140 acres. Uh, and this includes a nationally recognized 600 acre Olmstead designed arboretum uh, where we have over 8,000 specimens of plants. Um, I will say that we are also doing a membership drive this month and I want to thank our members who are here with us today. And if you're not a member, I encourage you to, con to, to consider becoming one. Um, it really does help us fulfill our mission of connecting people to nature. And we do this in so many ways. Uh, we do this through nature-based education, uh, through horticulture and sustainable landscapes. We do this through land research, conservation, our, our land stewardship. And we also do this through play. Uh, if you haven't been to Bernheim recently, uh, you need to come out and see Bernheim's new Playco system. Uh, it is located across from the visitor center. But we also connect people with nature through the arts. And I am the lucky person that gets to oversee the arts and nature program at Bernheim. Mm -hmm. And so in addition to these large scale projects that you're seeing here, the forest giants and our new spirit nest, which is located in zone two of Playco system. I also oversee Bernheim's artist and residence program. And um, this is an internationally recognized program. It was established in 1980. So it's celebrating 41 years. And uh, this is where artists are awarded the opportunity to live and work at Bernheim and make site-specific work inspired by their experience here. Uh, before we get too far into uh, Norman, I just wanted to introduce another workshop that will be taking place next Saturday. Uh, this is with another 2021 artist in residence, Laura Poulette. She is a botanical artist from Berea, who's actually in the audience with us today. Uh, but she's documenting Bernheim's incredible plant diversity. 
throughout all four seasons. So she will be joining us for fall uh, next week and doing this mini plein air botanical sketching workshop on Saturday, October 16th from 10 to 12 p.m. So if you are interested, you know, you can find out more details and register on our website at bernheim.org backslash calendar. And for the main events, I would, I'm pleased to introduce uh, Norman Spencer. He is a fine artist and printmaker, uh, originally from Louisville, Kentucky, but has recently moved to St. Louis. And he specializes in custom woodcuts and lino cut prints uh, with subjects that consist of community, nature, and identity. And so his residency Bernheim project is to create a series of lino cuts that celebrates black joy in the Bernheim wilderness. And this is in order to increase representation and inspire black people to explore the natural world. So I am going to stop sharing my screen and hand it over to Norman Spencer. Norman, thank you so much for being here and for doing this for us today. Thank you, Jenny. Thanks for having me. And thank you everyone for, for joining me today. Um, I really appreciate you guys giving me your, a little bit of your Saturday afternoon. Um, I know everyone's a little bit tired of Zooms and all that stuff, um, so I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, my name is Norman Spencer. I'm a printmaker. I, I work primarily in the in block printing, so like woodcuts and lino cuts. Um, I work mostly in lino cuts just because it's a lot easier on the hands than woodcuts, and it's a lot easier to find the material is. Um, but yeah, as, as Jenny said, I came to Bernheim with the goal of um, really of documenting as much black joy here as I could. Um, I, I believe that nature is a place for everyone and I wasn't really exposed to it uh, until adulthood. And um, I know that a lot of the things that kept me away from it are like just old, uh, stereotypes and historical narratives that my family associated with with nature and natural spaces and uh i just kind of hope that increasing representation will kind of help dispel that and get more people out into nature um but yeah um about my process this is a piece of linoleum here on the i'm not sure if you guys can see my screen um but yeah um, this is a pretty small piece. Let me show you guys a few larger pieces. Here's one here. This is of a couple that I met here at Bernheim a few weeks ago, just out hiking. Um, here's another piece completed. It's a block printing style, so I carve in, I carve images into the linoleum, and then I ink them and print them. These are some of the blocks here, so some of the pieces of linoleum that I've that I, that I carved. It's another of a of a family with one of the giants. I'm not sure if you can get the details in it, but yes. I love documenting human environmental interactions, like how human how people interact with their environment, both like natural and man-made. I love I love architecture as well, and like the natural line and like the, the lines that are used in buildings. Um, here's some smaller pieces. It's a turtle, small turtle, and a frog. Here are a couple of actual prints. These are all 19 by 25 inches of some of the blocks that I just showed you, but printed onto paper. Can you 
can you tell us what's going on in that print? Um, this is a photo of a friend of mine sitting, um, I forget the park, sitting in, a, in nature, just sitting and enjoying it and like taking a picture. There's trees and stars and like various like leaf litter that you would find on the ground. Here's a poster that I made for an upcoming show that I'll be showcasing all these pieces that I make here at Bernheim. Um, just some cone, there's me standing among some cone flowers. And do you mind sharing a little bit about what that exhibition will be? Oh, and yeah, where that, and when? That exhibition is titled Black and the Blue and Black and Blue Grass. It's at Garner Narrative Gallery here in Louisville. Um, it'll be November 19th through December 19th. Um, yeah, it'll just be the culmination of, uh, of this series. I'll probably continue it, but as far it'll be as far as it is right now. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I've been creating this work for a while and it's, I'm excited to show people and to just, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's very, it's very personal to me. There's a lot of like personal memories and experiences that I've had um, here in Kentucky and a few, a few other places. Um, but yeah, it's really just about increasing representation and just showing that, that, that imagery and getting it out there. So yeah, let me start carving. Let me go, with, um, as I said before, this is a piece of linoleum. This is what I use to carve. It's a, it's like a handle with interchangeable blades that I use to carve. This is what I use the most, which is a V gouge. And I use it to make like fine lines and details. And then there's a wide, like a wide U gouge that I use to take out large spot, like large pieces, like background parts. And then there's even an even smaller V gouge that I use to make, um, to make even smaller detailed work lines. We have a roller for rolling ink and a baron for applying pressure and hand printing. I print all of my prints by hand. Um, some people use a, a press and it can like make it more efficient if you wanna do large amounts, large amounts of prints, but I, I only do small editions. So um, usually like around 10 at the most, sometimes a bit more. Um, Norman, there was a request that they can't view the tools on your screen. Oh. Is there any way to aim that camera a little bit lower? Oh. Is that better? I think I'm getting, we, I can see the tools, but I'm seeing some people shake their heads. Oh. It's, different, it's a different uh, camera <laughs> share. Like there are two from Norman and you have to make sure you, you pin the one. Has yeah. Two. That's correct. If you didn't hear that, so Norman's on two different screens. Oh yeah, so, so I'm on, there's a screen yeah, with my so, face and a screen with. Um, yeah, my so tools. if you want to go up to view in the upper right hand corner and go to gallery, that way you will see uh, Norman. Recording. The, uh oh, <laughs> we're getting that reverb. I think. But does does is everybody can they see that now? Okay, I'm seeing some head shaking and I trust that everybody else can too. So, perfect. Um, Is that yeah, better? I think it's good. I think if you can mute yourself on one of those screens, Norman, although I'm not, yeah, you did, perfect, Never mind. <laughs> we just won't get that uh, reverb. So this is perfect. Cool. I'm kicking it off to you. Okay, um, hold on just a second, I'm having some, there, I think that's better. Can you guys still hear me? 
great. Okay. Um, yeah, these are the tools that I use. Um, for this, I think I'm mostly going to use the, the V gouge for the lines and the U gouge for the for the like large areas. Um, it's a block printing. Uh, it's a block printing style. So what you carve away doesn't show up on the image, and then what's left and what's raised up is what gets the ink and what becomes the final print image. So with that in mind, I think I'm going to take away and carve these black lines and use those as the guide for the carving that I'm going to use. It helps to have a, an idea in mind before, before you go of what you're going to do. There's a lot of different ways to approach the same image. What's always drawn me to this process is how like meditative it is. You can just kind of lose yourself in it once you get going. Norman, I hate to interrupt you one more time. Mm -hmm. There's just been a request if you could mute the screen that we're seeing your face and unmute the tool screen, which I think is already unmuted. I, I don't know how different that might really be, but let's try it. Thank you. It says you're on, okay, there you go. Is that better? <laughs> Not sure it is. So let's go back to the original way you had it. Sorry about that. Thank you for trying. Can you not find the unmute button on? Hey, is that better? Is that, I'm trying to fix the reverb. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Beautiful, yeah. thank you. Okay, sorry for all the interruptions. Okay, sorry about that guys, I hope that's better. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've had a, such a good time here. There's, um, I've always enjoyed nature and um, like as far as my work is concerned, it's always been a topic. Even when I'm talking about man-made environments, it's it always seems to find its way in the work. So it's this, 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 this experience being here at Bernheim has been such a great and inspiring place. Every day I like wake up and I go out and I like see something <laughs> that I wouldn't have seen if I wasn't here, you know, um, and I met some really cool people and talked to some interesting people and had and shared some cool stories. There was a question of how many prints do you usually make of an image? Um, it depends on the size and how many colors are involved, but usually no more than 20. Um, if it's like a multicolored image, then um, it's, it'll probably be around eight, sometimes 10 at the most. But um, yeah, um, and 
that's at a time. Sometimes like for a black and white image, like something like this, um, I'll make 10 or I'll make 20. And then if I need more of them, I'll just make more just because they're not an addition, they're open. But for the colored prints that I make, I have to know how many I'm going to make because they're, they're made um, using a reduction method. And um, yeah, I usually make no more than about 10. That's just because I, I am printing everything by hand. So it, it, is, it does take a little bit more time and there is a little bit more effort involved than just um, like running it through a press. Can you talk about the difference between doing a print by hand versus running it through a press for those of us that don't know much about printmaking? Um, yeah, presses are great. They're they're great for doing a lot of uh, for doing a lot of prints and for making them more more uniform. I would guess, um, and it's a lot easier on the hands as far as applying pressure to a piece of paper. Um, but they're also expensive. They 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 cost a lot, and when you're not when you're not buying a press, it's hard to find one and rent one. Um, so I, I like to do everything like myself. So I I tend to do everything by hand and just like so I know that I can do everything at home. In the living room or in the studio at home. So it's just a matter of preference, and a matter of like what's available and what's what's accessible to you. And so now because Norman has done such a great job muting his camera, but not the phone, if you want to change your view uh, from gallery to speaker, you will see uh, the print that the Lionel cut that he's carving as your full screen, I should say. Um, I was introduced to printmaking um as like as a teenager my first introduction was in high school um and screen printing a friend of mine his parents owned a shop and they would make like dance clothes for like dance teams and cheerleading teams and after school we would go there and we would make t-shirts and like screen print our t-shirts and give them to friends and stuff like that and i just really enjoyed the process of being able to make an image and like reproduce it a bunch of times and just the whole DIY process of just like getting your, like your hands dirty and not just drawing an image but using like using UV lights to put it into a to burn it into a screen all that stuff just kind of like really really caught my eye and my attention so um later in life like an adult <laughs> after I, after i got out of the navy when i went back to school i got back into um to printmaking but i started with um, i started doing block prints and uh taking a piece of birch plywood and just carving it and doing like house portraits and things like that and just kind of really just really fell in love with the, the process and the meditative nature of it. And that's, and that's got me where I am now. So there's another question out there. Mm -hmm. um, do you always carve freehand or do you ever draw on the surface of the lino first? 
Oh yeah, this is, I'm, I'm not drawing freehand right now. I, I, I transferred uh, a drawing that I drew from my iPad onto, onto the, the linoleum. But I, sometimes I freehand and sometimes I'll, I'll have like a base image on, but I, I know that I'm gonna add details later and then I'll add, I'll add details through the carving. And sometimes I'll just draw everything out onto the linoleum. But I drew this image first. This is going to be a sticker. I do a, I have a thing called um, the sticker of the month club where I make a print each month and then I do a sticker of it. And then I send them out to my, to the members. This month I'm doing two stickers, one to commemorate my time here at Bernheim and then another Halloween themed sticker. And so can you tell brain. people where, is this on Patreon or? Oh, yeah, it's on is Patreon. There... Okay, Patreon. Sorry if I'm going very fast. I just want to have enough time to actually um, to print this and show you guys the, the print process. There was another question um, and the person is intrigued by the large scale of some of the prints that you showed us earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about the difference in your choice between some of the smaller images that you've done versus some of these large scale as well? Um, how I choose to what's going to be really big and what's going to be small, it kind of depends. Sometimes it's like a monetary decision, like the, the supplies that I have on hand will make the decision for me. And um, other times if I just really like um, if I just really like the idea of a print and I just know that I'm going to like enjoy it or even before I, before I put the work into carving it or any, or even drawing it, I'll, um, yeah, I'll just decide that I want to do that, to do that large. Um, sometimes the, the subject matter necessitates it. Um, but most of the time it's just like, how much I like something before I put it, <laughs> before I turn it into a print. Um, this, I made this small because I'm going to make, it's going to be a small, um, it's going to be a small sticker. And I knew that I was going to do it for this and I didn't want it to be too large. Um, yeah, I just didn't want it to be, to be too large so that I had enough time to go through the whole process. Um, yeah, it just depends as far as the size is. I don't know if you guys noticed, but this has words on it. It says, welcome to the forest, but they're backwards. And that's because this, um, Printmaking kind of works on reverse. So whatever you have on your block, whenever you print it, it's gonna be the reverse of the image on the block. So all your words, if you have words in your, in your artwork, it all, it all has to be backwards, which can be done with like computers or mirrors, or if you just know how to do things backwards, some people are naturally talented. Since we're on the topic of process, um, someone was asking if you could explain the reduction method with colors when you add those to your prints. Yeah, um, the reduction method as the name, as the name implies, it, it requires you um, to reduce a block, like as you add color. So if you had um, like a two color image, like if this was gonna be two colors, 
I would carve out everything that I didn't need, like that was gonna that wasn't gonna be needed. Um, and I would just start the image with the lightest color of the of the image. So I would print. I'd have to I have to know how many I'm gonna print. So if I'm gonna do five, I'll print five. I'll ink this in the lightest color and then I'll print five of them. And then I'll look at the block and I'll say, okay, I don't need the lightest color anymore because I just printed it. So I'll take the lightest color away from the block. And then I'll say, okay, I need to I need the next color, which is darker. So I'll I'll ink this. I'll ink the block, which now has everything that was yellow is taken away because I just carved it away. So I'll ink it in the next color and then I'll I'll print each of those papers in the same exact spot so that the image goes directly over it. And then you'll have a two color print. I hope that makes sense. Reduction prints are a little harder because you have to deal with registration, which is, which means like the placement of the paper. So that the paper has to hit the block in the same spot after each, after each carving, or after each printing. Um, so it's a lot harder than just having like five blocks and making sure that they each get into the same spot. But it's a lot cheaper because you, instead of having to buy five linoleum blocks, you just use one. So there was a question about um, other places. So, so your exhibition at Garner Narrative, uh, mm -hmm. Black and Bluegrass. So you'll have images from Bernheim, uh, mm -hmm. but where else? Images from where else? Oh, it's, um, oh wow, there's a number of different, it's all places in Kentucky. They're all um, state parks and like local parks, homestead parks. Um, like Jefferson Forest, like Iroquois Park, um, Natural Bridge, um, like the Falls of the Ohio, um, Pine Mountain. Um, yeah, just lots of different places. Um, like I said, I wasn't introduced. I I wasn't. I didn't really get into the net like natural spaces and being outdoorsy until adulthood until really when I was like in the Navy and I would travel and just seek these places out but um once I did I just kind of like went into it and so I, I try to I try to go to a lot of different places around especially like local places around that are close to Louisville not local but that are close to Louisville and Kentucky state parks and things like that like um yeah like Mammoth Cave natural bridge, things like that. But yeah, there are gonna be a few pieces from here, um, from here in Bernheim. Can you speak a little bit more to your experience here? Are there particular places that you love to hike or places that you like to spend time with? Oh, um, since I've been here, I've really been loving, is it Mac Lake? What's the lake by the? Max Lake, you got it. <laughs> yeah, and um, as far as the work is concerned, like the, the giants have been huge. People have been re really enjoying them. Um, it seems like when I see a lot of people, it's mostly around the giant. Um, But yeah, um, just the other day, 
I have this cool name badge that says artist in residence on it. So people, sometimes people ask me questions. And just the other day I was on the walk here around the edible garden and um, a family asked me to identify, help identify like a, a fruit from a, from a tree. And I had no idea what it was, but <laughs> I was just like, I'm the artist in residence. I'm not really sure what the, the plants are, but um, but I smelled it and it was really cool. And uh, we found a naturalist and they helped us. Um, but yeah, I got to talk to them about, like they asked me what an artist in residence was and what they do. And um, yeah, it was just really cool. I asked them like how they found out about Bernheim and if they'd, if they'd been here before. And it was like their first time. And they were just like, um, yeah, they were really just interested in like, they had no idea that artists like come to places like this and especially like artists that look like me, this is a, a black family. Um, so that just kind of, it was like very shocking to them. But yeah, just, I tend to go on walks and I like to go to different parts of the, to different parts of Bernheim and just document the people that I see. But there isn't like one particular place or that has really been interesting. I've just noticed that a lot of people have been congregating around the giants. When he's looking for um, places to do a picture, do a carving, do you take photos or do you do sketches? Um, yeah, mostly I've been a lot, a lot of the time lately, I've been working with photos. It used to be when my work was more based on like architecture and things, I would, um, I would walk around and do like these quick sketches. And sometimes I do do like little quick sketches of people. If I don't want to take a photo of someone, I'll just like do a quick little sketch just to like remember a couple of features or something. Um, but a lot of the work is, uh, yeah, a lot of the work is based on photos are just memories that are then just like turned into abstract sketches that are then just turned into prints. You know, where do you get the linoleum? Um, you can get them from online or uh, um, from art stores, either online or locally, depending on where you are, like artists and craftsmen and like Preston Art Center, they sell it in uh, both large pieces and small pieces. I tend to get really large pieces and then just cut them down as I need them. But it's pretty re readily available. It's, 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 like the, it's like the flooring material, except it's untreated. So it's, uh, so it's just carvable. But you can also get it from like flooring places. They'll have it sometimes, like they'll have scraps. Mm -hmm. But sometimes that's a little harder to carve because it'll have little treatments on it. I'm gonna carve get this background ready to carve out and then I'll start printing. I don't know if you guys had a chance to check Bernheim out yet, but you definitely should. It's so it's so beautiful here. Fall's like one of my favorite times of the years, and all the trees are starting to turn now. All right, so we got another question. Oh, sorry, Joyce, I didn't mean to. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, how difficult is it to fix a mistake? Whew. Now, that's a loaded question. Um, you kind of have to go into this with an exaggerated sense of patience and an understanding that one simple mistake can 
I hesitate to say ruin anything, but kind of just change change the outcome of a print. And you have to like go into it with that mind state that, hey, this may not, anything can happen. And that this may not, so sometimes you want to change mistakes and it's easy. It's like just putting a little glue where you, where you carve something and just trying to find the piece and putting it back. But most of the time it's just kind of just accepting that that happens and either trying to find a way to make the image work are just mentally just leaving it there and saying, hey, that happened, that's part of the process, which is part of the artwork. <laughs> and leaving it at that, like, judge, I just slipped just there, that could have been, that could have been hazardous. But um, yeah, a lot of the times it's just accepting that something can happen and being patient but um, I don't know that there's a saying in printmaking in it that kind of a, has to do with that. And it's um, the saying is to measure twice and cut once. So just kind of like double think about everything that you're doing and that you're gonna do so that there aren't too many surprises and then just accepting the surprises. So I'm using, I just switched gouges to this large U gouge and as you see, I'm just using it to take away more, more area around the image because I'm not going to use this area around it. I'm going to cut it out. So I'm just making area for the, for the scissors to cut. When you're doing a multiple color thing, um, no, this is going to be a single colored print. Right. Okay, but my question is, if you're doing a multicolor thing, when you ink, do you ink just the spot you want to print or do you ink the whole block? Um, depends if it's, it's um, most of the time I'll ink the whole thing mm -hmm. just because colors interact with each other in weird ways so if you if you partially ink it and then you put another color over top of it sometimes the partial inking will work against you and will it'll kind of like show it'll sh the, the borders of that inking will show so it's best to just to just ink the whole thing because you're you've already you're in the in that method you're re you're reducing it so yeah. ideally everything that you don't work, want is gonna be taken away or has already been taken away. So you just carve the whole, you just, um, you ink the whole thing. And as you see, I'm just using some scissors to cut around the image that I'm using and just use, taking all that excess away. So there's been a comment from Karen who said that she would love to see you illustrate some of J. Drew Lanham's writing. Um, he's a black orthologist who has written extensively about environmental justice in particular with the underrepresentation of black people in birding. So I'm not familiar with J. J. Drew, yeah, J. Drew Lanham. But thank you for bringing that to our attention, Karen. Yeah, thank you for that. I was, I'm not familiar either, but I'll look, I'll look them up. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take a piece of paper the exact same size um, as the paper that I'm planning on printing on, and I'll, I'll put my image, I'll put my block onto that paper. Oh. This is like 10 by nine. Um, just like the linoleum, I buy it, I buy like large sheets and then I cut them into smaller pieces. Um, and then I just use like a regular, like a masking tape like this. And I'll just make circles and glue them. And 
I know we only have a few minutes left, so I'm trying to rush through it. I think we'll be fine. But yeah, I'll find out, I'll decide on the orientation and keep in mind that the final image is going to be the, the mirror of what you see. So it's all gonna be orientated the other way. Um, a lot of the times I'll take, I have like a horsehair brush like this here that I'll use to like brush away the, the small pieces of linoleum. I'll just brush it. Um, today I'm using this speedball. It's like an oil-based, it says fabric ink, but it's also used on paper. Um, it's just oil-based, so it takes a minute to dry. But um, but once it goes on, it's pretty permanent. I also do all my inking on uh, on a cookie sheet, just because it's like really easy to take it to clean, um, and it just keeps everything contained. Sometimes I use like a piece of plexiglass or something. So I'll put a little ink on. I'm not using very much just because I'm just gonna do a few prints. I'll take my roller and I'll slowly roll it out. After each roll, I'll lift it just to make sure that it that I'm getting the whole roll. Um, inking is just it's very it takes a lot. It, it takes a couple of times inking it just to get the experience like it's something that you have to do just to get a feel for it as far as how much ink you need to make a good print. And it is some testing, but here. Is the inking, and you'll see, you'll get a an idea of it, or you'll you'll get to see the image that I just print that I just carved. It's kind of like a reveal. Not sure if you can see it, but the ink has kind of a sheen to it. And once you get to like a, you don't want to over ink it just because it'll get all gloopy, but you don't want to under ink it either because then it'll be a, a ghost image. But you want to kind of see like a, a sheen, like a sort of like shine. And it has a, like a certain level of tack, tackiness to it that just like you have to feel like you have to do it yourself just to, to get a feel for it, to know that you're there. And the first inking, it always takes a little bit more ink to get the to get the fresh block primed. But after you do about like five prints from a block, it'll you'll start to see that it takes a little less ink to get it ready each time. So I'll take my paper, which is the same size as what I'm using. And I'll line it up with the other with the paper that the block is taped to, just so I can get. This isn't how I do uh, multicolored registration, but for a single color, it's it's pretty basic. So I'll take it. I'll use my hands to to kind of adhere it to it, and then I'll use a block. I use the baron. I'll get the edges, and then I'll work my way into the center. When you're done with printing with a block, do you keep the blocks or do you destroy them? I keep, I usually keep them for a while. Um, I just moved to St. Louis, so I, I 
I threw a bunch of blocks away, but I kind of have like a hoarderish mentality with them. Um, even if I don't plan on using them again, I think in my head, oh, I may use that for something. Yeah. Um, so I tend to keep them. I just had a, t a teacher ask me for some, for some old blocks so that she could teach our students about printmaking mm -hmm. and not have them go through like the carving just because it can be a little dangerous, but mm -hmm. she's gonna have them print some pre-made blocks. So they'll get some use out of them. Mm -hmm. And um, when I'm done printing, I won't take the whole thing off. I'll kind of look at it in pieces. Like I'll look at the top half and I'll keep my hand there. And if, if it doesn't look good, I can, I can take it and I can ink it. I can ink the block again and just make sure that it doesn't touch. And that's kind of like a little trick. And then you can put it back, but you gotta make sure that your hand's there so it doesn't move. And then instead of looking at that same spot again, I'll look at the bottom. I'll assume that that's fine. I'll look at the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's a little shadow there as far like, so I need to ink it a little bit more. Your first, your first print is usually the lightest just because it's a fresh block and there's not a lot of ink on the block. You just gotta be real careful. And then you put it in the same spot. And then, And then there you go. Yeah, and then um, then you just clean up. Um, I use either water-based ink or an oil-based ink that you can wash, which you can wash away with water. Um, so a cleanup is usually pretty easy. There are other inks that are a little harder that you need solvents and stuff to use, but if you just look on the on the container, it should tell you what you need to clean it up with. Well, that's been amazing, Norman. I can't believe it's 1256. <laughs> we sat with you through an entire hour where you created and, and finished a work of art right before our eyes. So uh, thank you so very much for doing that and for also just rolling with it as we figured out this whole process between the different cameras. Um, I think it's made a huge difference for us to be able to really see you cut and, and create this by hand. Um, I've heard some so wonderful, inspiring. Uh, thank you so much for this demonstration. We enjoyed it very much. Uh, thank you, we really loved enjoying the, uh, watching the process, wishing you continued success. So, so very interesting. Thank you guys again for showing up and for, for watching this. Mm -hmm. uh, Norman will be here uh, through next Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you come out to Bernheim, look for him. He will be wearing his artist in residence badge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, yes, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.